Hey guys, it's Alex again with the Outdoor Campus Sioux Falls today. I'm going to be talking to you guys about map and compass navigation in a class we call Find Your Bearings. So today we're going to identify the basic parts of a compass, um, talk about declination, understand what that is and why you need to adjust your equipment for it, and talk about orientating your map as well as finding bearings and how to use them. When you start considering all the different features compasses could come with, especially those that help you measure the vertical height of objects or the incline of slope in front of you, the anatomy of compasses can become complex rather quickly. So to keep it simple for today's video, we're just gonna talk about the basic features you need for navigation. And these compasses are set up for that. And compasses like this, I like to break them into two parts. I break them into the base plate and the needle housing. Now we'll start by talking about the base plate. Although it is simple, it is super, super important. For magnetic compasses like this to read correctly, they need to be held flat. They need to be held correctly. So if your base plate is warped or cracked, uh, you won't be holding your compass correctly even though you think you are, and you could get the wrong readings. Now, on your base plate, you should also have some markings. Now, we'll talk about a couple of these markings, and then we'll move into the needle housing and talk about the rest, and then we'll come back out and talk about some more markings on our base plate that we'll use, especially when we start uh, plotting bearings on our map. Now, the first mark we'll talk about on our base plate, though, is going to be this guy. And he's super important for navigation because he's your direction of travel arrow or your navigation arrow. And he tells you which direction to point the compass when you're taking or following a bearing. Now, the next guy we'll talk about on the base plate of a compass is going to be this line right here. Sometimes on other compasses, it's just a mark. On this instruction compass, it's a line right above our bezel. And that line is called the index line. A lot of people um, call it the read your bearing here line, especially when you know where you're at on a map and you're trying to read a bearing of where you need to go, uh, which we'll get to a little bit later today, but you'll read it right there at your index line. As you see that bezel spins and you can line it up perfectly with a degree and know what degree you're on. So when we start talking about the needle housings, uh, the first thing we'll talk about is this rotating bezel right here. I like to think of them as the gatekeeper to the needle housing because everything you need to be able to read your bearing at your index line here is inside of this um, rotating bezel. Uh, the bezel is going to be marked from 0 degrees all the way to 360 degrees. Um, some compass models only mark it up to uh, 359 degrees. That's because north is both 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Now, if we move inside of our rotating bezel, the first thing we'll talk about is this solid red needle here. Now, the solid red needle is magnetized, and that's how he gets his name. He's the magnetized needle. The end of him always points north or towards the magnetic pole. Now, in order to utilize him with our bezel, we also have this outline here that fits around the outside of our magnetized needle perfectly. Now, that outline is going to be called your orienting arrow. Now, you use your orienting arrow in conjunction with your bezel and your magnetized needle to um, find your bearings. The next feature of a needle housing we'll talk about, especially when we're talking about using a um, compass to take a bearing on a map, is going to be these lines on our needle housing. Now, these lines are going to be called your orienting lines, and you use these orienting lines um, to help you line it up with north-south grid lines on a map or the edge of your map uh, to help you know which way north is. So I'll zoom back out and I can show you a better example of those orientating lines on a real compass. Uh, they're inside of that needle housing there and they spin with your rotating bezel. Now those come in handy especially when you're taking a bearing. If you know where you're at on a map and you're trying to uh, get to a location, uh, you'll use those orienting lines um, to line up uh, with the north-south grid lines on your map or the edge of your map, um, and it helps you read your map correctly. Uh, some other features that I look for if I'm going to be using a compass for uh, navigation with a map is that the base plate's nice and clear. Um, maybe it's just a personal preference, but I like to be able to look through um, and know exactly where my compass is at on the map, especially if I'm trying to line up my orienting lines. Um, another feature that I really like is I like them to, or the base plates, to have at least one straight edge. Um, that way, when I'm drawing lines on my map, I can draw them straight. Uh, and then I also look for some sort of ruler or way to measure those lines that I'm going to draw so that uh, I can use the scale on my map and accurately figure out those distances. Alright, so we reviewed the basic anatomy of a compass. 
We've even talked about some features that are handy to have on a compass when you're gonna be using them with a map. We should be really close to taking bearings, right? And we are, there's just a couple things we need to understand first. And one of them is declination. Now, even though that sounds big and scary, it's really not, it's just the variance. It's the variance between magnetic north and true north. So when I was talking about our magnetized needle earlier, I said that he always points towards magnetic north or towards the magnetic pole. When maps are made, they don't use magnetic north. They use true north or the direction of Earth's travel towards the poles. So there could be a change and a difference between those and adjusting that is really important because being off by a single degree can lead you off course by 100 feet over the course of a mile. So if I'm going out geocaching and that cache is three miles into the forest and I'm following those bearings, by the time I get to those bearings or that end cache, if I'm off by just one degree over those three miles, I'm looking for a little box 300 feet away from it. So I probably won't find it. So adjusting for declination is really important. It'll keep you on the same path. And there's a couple different ways to know if you need to change your declination for a trip. Number one is to look at the map. Most topographical maps will have declination information on them. However, that information is only as new as that map. So if you're using a 50 year old map, you're gonna be using 50 year old declination uh, information and it might be off. So the best resource that I found is the National Oceanic and Atmos Atmospheric Association. And I'll take you over to their website and show you they have uh, a historic map so you can look at declination over time and they also have a declination calculator so you can put in the location you're going to go for your trip uh, or your travel and know how to adjust your compass. When you adjust your compass there's a couple different ways depending upon your brand. So you guys can finally find out why I'm carrying around two compasses today. Uh, some compasses you just need your hand to use. You can hold the inside part of the needle housing and rotate it to adjust the scale of declination. Uh, some compasses, however, require a special manufacturer's tool to adjust for um, declination. So it's important to know what compass model you have and how to adjust it and the declination of your trip's location. So this is that web page I was talking about with the declination calculator on it. Um, if you don't know the latitude and longitude of the location you're at or traveling to, you can search it over here and it'll automatically put it in for you. Um, you can look for the dates that you're gonna want it um, and then hit calculate and it'll pull up that declination information for you and you can make sure your compass is calculated for your trip. So now that we understand declination at least a little bit, um, what it is and why we should adjust our equipment for it, we can talk about orientating our map. Now map reading uh, can be kind of a challenge sometimes. Correlating what you're seeing on paper to what you're seeing in real life can be difficult. But orientating your map can help you do that. You'll be able to identify nearby landmarks, um, know for certain what trail you're on or what trailhead you're at, and generally just feel better uh, knowing where you're at on that map. So. In order to orientate your map, it's really, really simple. All you have to do is lay your compass on your map with the direction of travel arrow pointed towards the top of the map. Then I spin my bezel until north is lined up with my direction of travel arrow. And I lay my map or my compass back on my map. Now I can either line my straight edge of my compass up with the left or the right side of the map, as long as it's along a straight edge, and you can turn your body until you put your magnetic needle into your orienteering arrow. Now that will tell you which way north is and now you have your map laid out going north. Now we've talked about the basic anatomy, we've talked about declination, we've talked about orientating our map, and I keep saying taking bearings, taking bearings. Now when I'm taking bearings there's three main things I can do with them. I can use them to get to a location if I know where I'm at on a map. I can use them to find where I'm at on a map if I'm on a linear trail, and I can also use them to help find my location using field bearings and landmarks. And so we're going to go through how to do each of those now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get somewhere. I know where I'm at on a map. I'm at home today, and I want to make it over to Blue Star Camp here. So what I need to do in order to find the bearing of how to get to um, Blue Star Camp from my house is line the straight edge of my compass up with where I'm at and where I want to go. So I make a straight line just like that, making sure that my navigation arrow up here 
is pointed in the same general direction that I want to travel. That way I'm not upside down or backwards. I'm gonna get the correct reading. So once I have a straight line with my compass edge between where I'm at and where I wanna go, and my navigation arrows pointed in the same general direction, I spin my bezel until my orienteering lines line up with the north-south grid lines on the map or the left and right edges of my map. Then all I have to do is read the bearing that's up at my index line and I know in order to travel from here to Blue Star Camp I need to follow that bearing. So we can use bearings to help us find destinations but we can also use bearings to help us find us as long as we're on a trail. So the first thing we need to do is find a landmark that we can also identify on the map. Once we find that landmark, we need to take what's called a field bearing. So in order to take a field bearing, you take your navigation arrow and you point it directly at the object or your landmark. Once that's pointed at your landmark, you simply spin your bezel until your magnetized arrow is inside of your orienting arrow. So I'd spin just like that and look at the bearing that I captured. Once I have that bearing captured, I can go ahead and lay one of the straight edges of my compass, one of the corners, at that landmark. Now, the next thing I do is I don't rotate my bezel. I don't wanna to touch my bezel. I don't wanna get rid of that bearing that I found towards the landmark. So I rotate my entire compass, the entire base plate. And I'm gonna rotate my base plate until two things happen. One, that our orienting lines here run north-south with the orienting lines on the map, and that north on our bezel is pointed north on the map as well. So keeping that corner on our landmark that we found, we make our compasses north line up. And then we have a line running from our landmark to our trail. And where that line crosses the trail is your location on the trail. If you're not on a trail and you still want to find your location using a compass and a map, your odds are pretty good if you can find more than one landmark. So what we did earlier is we found one landmark and we were able to follow it back to where it crossed our trail. And we knew we were at that point on the trail. What we can do now is take more than one field bearing and transfer those all back to a location. So if all those meet at one point, you know you're at that one point. But more than likely what will happen and what happens all the time is you'll end up with a little triangle area where they don't all meet at the same spot, but you know you're somewhere between those lines in that little triangle area. If you end up with a really big triangle, uh, go back and check your angles and your bearings. Chances are you have at least one significant error. Well, that's all I have for map and compass work today. Hope you learned a little bit and we'll see you around.